Yeah. Good morning. Excellence is our mantra as it is time mm -hmm. for us to deliver premium family entertainment to your doorsteps this morning. Good morning. Welcome Hello. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. It's a motivation-filled edition of Wake Up Nigeria this morning. Mm. Definitely the most anticipated breakfast TV show here in Nigeria. Mm. And we are so, so, so in front of your screens. Mm. Of course, uh, mm. we're rated E, mm. E for entertainment. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's what we bring uh, to you every morning. Yeah. And uh, MM is looking very wonderful. MM, is that hair, is that a natural hair? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, it could be. Ah. Like, it depends on how you want to see it. Ooh. <laughs> oh, baby, it's not your natural hair. Oh. How are you guys doing? Fantastic, Good. fantastic. Good. But guess what, MM? What? You bought it, girl. It's yours. It belongs I know. to you. I Hello. know. I know. But that is and, I'm, and I'm carrying it gracefully. <laughs> And of excellently, course. because E stands for excellence. Mm -hmm. E stands for MM. What else does E stand for? <laughs> All right, but then, hey, come on. We have a satisfactory one hour, 45 minutes of top-notch top entertainment, mm -hmm. properly curated for you. Now, just sit back, yeah. relax, enjoy. We'll take you on a roller coaster ride. I and Mike Messi Kenner. And I'm Titi Lao So now you can use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC across all social media platforms to be a part of the best breakfast show on Nigerian TV. Now you can also watch us live if you are not at home and in front of a television. And if Nepa has struck, mm. you can use the app uh, to watch us uh, download from the Google Play Store or uh, the iOS version. We implore you, make sure you follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and quite a few others at TVC Connect. Uh, we have quite a lot lined up for you. Should we tell them how we start? Uh, Gloria A. Ajogi Adaba is a personal development coach, engineer, and environmentalist. She is the founder of Thumbs Up Youth Leadership Development Initiative, and she's a certified John Maxwell coach. There's a lot to talk about today. It's all about eating the right soul food. Soul food. No, she's not a nutritionist. I'm talking about the soul, people. And then, of course, a hair consult is a registered hair consulting company in Nigeria that deals with styling of hair, hair treatment, and sales of hair products. And, uh, of course, uh, we're going to be here. In 2015, a high detoxin hair consult was founded by Ido Kazim Olakunli and was registered, of course, as a company. We're we'll talking to them about uh, their operations and how uh, they, we can learn from them. Yeah. You know when they say consult, everybody thinks a uh, doctor, really, or maybe a business consultant. Okay. But now you can consult on so many things. You can consult on your you know, weight loss. You can consult on your hair. You can consult on so many things. So people are getting paid for their knowledge, so to speak. And I think that's a really, really cool thing. So if I have a knowledge in looking after kids, I can actually be paid to consult you as a parent, to teach you a few things about your kids. Yeah, now, so Interesting. The, the, the question now is how many people are willing to pay for that service? Because mm. a lot of people feel that, oh, yeah, it's knowledge now. Nah. Mm. Did you not read it? Why not share it for mm. free? Yeah. You get yeah. people really do not understand that. Okay, mm. that knowledge, some people actually even paid premium yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. You know, so incidentally, I, I thought about something like this. There's something I wanted, I, I'm about to start, and depends on the pedigree you have. When yeah. you're going to start, you, do, you might have to give some of it for free. You mm. have to. Sure. Somebody has to see the value that you can bring. You know, I can't just put up an ad and say, okay, hey, uh, I can teach you public speaking yeah. and all of that and expect you to pay premium for it. Mm. Like, I would expect you should put out something, and then when they, value, when they look at the value you give, and then that value is worth paying, and then people pay. But, so that's where a lot of people have problems. You, okay, yes, you have content, yeah. but hey, come on, not everybody knows you. So you have to build up that pedigree, build up that, you know, people have to see uh, your brand, build up your brand. And one very good way of doing it is giving some of it free. Yeah. You have to. So uh, doing some services for free, you know, can be beneficial, but in my opinion, some of them might be really expensive. So, exactly. for instance, so that's what I'm saying, <laughs> that there's some of these yeah. courses that you have to take online now that you have to pay yeah. so much for, especially now that, you know, dollars is, you know, oh, against the Naira. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm. not even good, good no. So, do you get, so, um, <laughs> yeah, anyways, um, how was your weekend, guys? Oh, fantastic. Uh, mm. Rest, 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 and hung out with the kids. Went to a restaurant yesterday, and it was just amazing how so I was just looking at, at uh, the kids pick, select their food buffet, 
and then I'm looking at my husband. You know, mm. you know, buffet is one price. Yeah, yeah, it's for fixed. everybody. So here. And then the kids are now picking like tiny, tiny portions. And I just look at my husband like, ah, okay, is this all they're going to eat? <laughs> Have they, you ever felt that way so before? They was... should eat for the week. <laughs> is it for the week? <laughs> No food this whole week after buffet. I'm telling you. It was as... a social media free week for me. Oh, for real? Yes, I logged out of social media. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about your week All right. a lot more later. Okay, okay. Right? okay. But then let's just take a look at the weather and we'll be back with the news. It's about time for a news update right here on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Titi Lyo Onyeson. We begin with the leadership of the striking National Association of Resident Doctors who have re refused to sign the new memorandum of action brokered by its parent body, the National Medical Association. The NMA, the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria, the medical doctors in the academic appended uh, their signatures to the new MOU, but only NARD declined to assent. The NMA's intervention was to end the resumed strike of the resident doctors, which enters its 22nd day to yesterday. Uh, NARD president, Uyi Lawa, uh, Uku Siesui, who declined his assent owing to an undisclosed, undisclosed clause, insisted the leadership has to get the nod of members before he could sign the document. The Minister of Labor and Employment said at the end of the six-hour long meeting, said that uh, all other unions in the negotiation, including the NMA and the Medical and Dental Consultants of Nigeria, signed the new agreement. Mr. Chris Ngige disclosed that the meeting did not discuss the issue of no work, no pay, but that all parties at the meeting agreed to an out-of-court settlement. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have arrested a wanted drug dealer at a church in Ujodui, Keja, area of Lagos State. Mr. Stefan Ikeanyao has been on the wanted list for attempting to export 69.65 kilograms of cocaine, heroin, and cannabis to the UK through Muratala Mohammed International Airport. The NDLEA operatives had traced the wanted drug dealer to a popular Pentecostal church, where they arrested him soon after he stepped out of the church service. Also, at the Lagos airport, NDLEA operatives arrested an Italy-bound passenger, Abibu Miminu, during the outward clearance of passengers on Ethiopian Airways flight to Italy. While under observation at the agency's facility, the trafficker excreted 68 wraps of heroin in three excretions, all weighing 800 grams. <coughs> Songs of thanksgiving and praise to God were on the lips of the mother of the secretary to the Bayelsa state government, Bettina Benson, after she regained her freedom yesterday. The 86-year-old spent one month in captivity and has been reunited with her family in Yenagua, the Bielsa state capital. The state's commissioner of police said the command worked in synergy with other security agencies to enable the unconditional release of the octogenarian from her abductors. He added that some arrests have been made in connection with the kidnap. The command is happy to announce that uh, Madame Bettina Benson, who was kidnapped three weeks ago, had just been released. And it was through the collaborative effort of all the security agencies in the state. We worked together in synergy and uh, were able to pick some of the people who were behind the kidnapping. I think it's the pressure that had led to her being released today. Our message to everybody who is involved in this heinous act is that it is a crime and it will be viewed as a crime. That no matter how far you go, the law will catch up with you and you will be dealt accordingly. And I want to also to emphasize that no money was paid for this particular rescue. Outside Nigeria, the Taliban has disclosed that hundreds of its fighters are heading to the Panjshir Valley, one of the few parts of Afghanistan not controlled by the group. But opposition group leader Ahmad Massoud, whose forces control the last major anti-Taliban holdout, says its forces are ready to fight if the Taliban try to take over Panjshir Valley. Meanwhile, the Pentagon has said that it's formally seeking airlift help 
from commercial airlines to relocate evacuees from Af Afghanistan once they have gotten out of their country. The British military on Sunday acknowledged at least seven deaths at the airport the previous day. Others may have been trampled, suffocated, or suffered heart attacks as Taliban fighters fired into the air to dry back the crowds. And welcome back. It's time we review the newspaper headlines. And of course, we'll be starting with the punch making the headlines this morning. Government 4.8 billion naira pledge. Federal government can't be trusted, says NARD. We negotiated with NMA, minister insists. And we can't go back to our members with empty promises. Pay first, says NARD. We didn't hold talks with you. Your matter is in court, Ingigi tells doctors. And here we have a photo story of the um, coronation of the Oluwari over the weekend. Here we have Atua Shea third ascension. New dawn for Isekiri, says Obasanjo. Catholic clerics should not endorse political leaders, bishops warn. And vehicle conveying Delta wedding guests, some assaults, seven die. Pretty sad story there. And COVID-19. Ogun lecturer tackles Lagos over detention. Government threatens persecution. And here, wanted drug le le dealer arrested in Lagos church, man excretes heroin. And ex habilist allegedly hypnotizes Lagos teenager. Victim recovers in Ondo. And here we have Kaduna Baptist students abductors promise to release all abductees. 315. And at the top of the paper here, quickly, Nigerians in diaspora remit $65.34 billion in three years. And food imports gulped $1.4 billion in six months, says CBN. Grazing reserves, autumn threatens legal action against Buari. And finally here, red price hike looms as bakers decry flour costs. And also here, making the headline on the Vanguard newspaper, strike, why we refuse to sign MOU, says doctors. And here we have Obasanjo Okowa, pray for Oluo worry. Farmers killings, mischief makers trying to rekindle a fair Modakeke feud. O Oni, adversary committee. And here we have COVID-19, third wave. Lagos records 500 deaths, blames inbound passengers for spread. And here we have a photo story, of course, of a passenger paying homage to the new Ulu of Wari. And um, also here we have cargoes on easy calm over concession to IOC shareholders lifters by NLNG. And um, finally here we have Undo Amotekun rescues hypnotized Lagos teenager from Ritualist. And that's all we can take on the newspaper headlines this morning. Next up is fitness. Stay with us. All right. So, yeah, <laughs> it's um, been a wonderful weekend, and mm -hmm. we had a beautiful coronation. Yep. The coronation of a 21st Ulu of Wari, yeah. Omoba Sholai Miko. And it was, um, it was splendid. It was extravagant. Mm. It was uh, the glitz, the yes. glamour, yeah. the glitterati, yeah. the, the splendor. It was, it, was, it was cool to watch. I mean, someone yeah. made mention that at least we're not... Uh, it's not every time we'll be hyping Queen of England and all yeah. the ceremonies. We have our own. Yeah. And it was good to see someone who is young, who's progressive, mm. who, you know, who mm. understands what it means to, uh, to be a part of... Uh, uh, mm. to be a millennial, yeah. mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. and move. And, you know, it brought me to think about it, that what role... Uh, what, what, what's the role of a traditional mm. institution yeah. in societal development? True. I mean, look, look at it. Before now, we know that um, in, in ancient days and part, times past, before the, uh, before the colonial before masters, colonial even after masters, this, yeah. the traditional institution was very powerful. In mm -hmm. fact, we, that was how the rule was, yeah. monarchy and everything. But then with the advent of democracy, mm. a lot of things have quite changed. Change. They've turned to some sort of intermediary, mm -hmm. per se, not really recognized as power as such by the constitutions of different countries where you still have these yeah. monarchies and all yeah. of that. But they still do have a role. So I, I wanted to look in, into you know some of the background. You know, I'm the one that always does the history segment, so I'm okay. going to go okay. back. So Wari Kingdom, according to history, dates back 541 years. years. Yeah. Now that is incredibly significant. It's a long time, and um, the coronation itself marks uh, the Ulu of Wari as a principal officer of the Wari Kingdom with the help of the chiefs, the, the Ojoye, and um, the Ulu runs the affairs of 
the Ishekiri people. Mm. So how, so I, I, I don't want to make it seem like, you know, you're doing a compare and contrast, um, but you have to think about how much impact former uh, kings have had and how this particular one has decided to broadcast it to the world who he is and, and that, that he has arrived. So this is the first time I've seen the coronation so well broadcast, so well uh, opened up to the public. Well, the I'm coronation of Onye of Ifei was also broadcasted yeah. as well. So I, I think like, it's like Mike, yeah, it's a timing. It's like, it's like Mike said, okay. um, it's the, the advent mm. or the advent of things are changing. Okay. So, I mean, why not just go with the times? And I mm. think it was also nice of, mm. you know, them to let people into That's their the world and That's into the their space. Mm. And let's not forget, he's mm. no longer the Omo Bashola. Yeah. I remember that song actually yeah. always plays in my head. He's mm. now the Ogiyame mm. Otsuwashe mm. the third. Mm. And that's his new title. Mm. That's his new name going his forward. Name. You know, yeah. I, um, for, so I, I, saw, I, I, I saw that there was a, there was a following from actors and Nollywood. Mm. Yeah. You know? True. And so I asked the question, I was like, is he an actor or something? And, all <laughs> that. and then, so it was then someone now pointed out that um, the series Tokpai was involved in Riona, mm. yeah, that it yeah, was a depiction, depiction of, of the, the Shekiri, Shekiri Kingdom. Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, sure. You understand? And mm. the series had uh, was met mm. with so much um, acclaim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it was met with so much acclaim. Mm. And that is why a lot of Nollywood and actors mm. were there. Were there. I mean, the boat regatta mm. and all of that. The boat regatta is a very strong, um, you know, st mainstay of yeah. Niger Delta. Yeah. If you're going to do anything going in Niger Delta, Delta yeah. a boat regatta the boat, is yeah. it. And they had a very, just before the coronation, mm. there was a boat regatta for two hours yeah. and all of that. Split. It was, really it was great. wonderful really to watch great. and all of that. Mm -hmm. So because of Riona and all of that, that's mm. why, you know, there was that warming up. Okay, we've, we've seen what... Uh, it, it, we've seen what the Shekimi Kingdom can, mm. uh, you know, what it entails and all mm. of that, and it was quite cool. Mm -hmm. Well, um, what I love the most about this is, especially at, in a time or at a time like this where history is um, mm. gradually, you know, our history and mm. our culture is gradually wading off. Even, you know, is, our children, is, is, you know, do is. not even know what our history or our it culture is. upholds anymore. Yeah. It was yeah. beautiful to see this, like, in, you know, picture mm. you get. I mean, to see all of this being celebrated, it was lovely okay, to so see. Okay, so but just, uh, let's, to... let's touch down before, because we're about to round up now, yeah. Yeah. the role. Yes. Now, we're talking about the role. Yes. I said that before this time, they've mm. been, I, I wouldn't say, but their role has now been mm. more of intermediaries mm. between the executive or the government and, and the people. The people yeah. And it's a very important role. Yeah. I dare say, I mean, when what really got me was the acceptance. Mm. In such a way, the, 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 the traditional ruler, the, the, the old world warrior, was accepted in such a way that I've not even seen an elected government being accepted. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying that with that way, there's a lot that traditional institutions can do yeah, when it comes is. to bridging the gap mm -hmm. and being an intermediary. I hear, I hear what Mike is saying. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't get to watch the speech, that speech was a very, very, very powerful speech. And I think it's one that might be quoted in universities uh, sometime soon. Uh, I know we don't have time to play that now, but the speech was very, very significant. He touched on so many key areas, and also he touched on religion. So mm. uh, that was very, very significant for me, and he, you know, he, he gave uh, credence to God in every way for him having received that crown, and he, he sounds like he understands the responsibility, and uh, yeah, God speed to him. Yeah, I wish him all the best. All right, mm -hmm. all the best, all the best, all the best. That was a very wonderful display of our tradition over yeah. the weekend. And that's it on What's Up and About. We'll take this time out. There's still quite more to come on the show. We are still on to Wake Up Nigeria. And yes, it's time for your favorite part of the show and my favorite part of the show, of course. And with me in the kitchen is Chef Bell. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I love the smile that you bring with you this morning. I love your hair. Thank you very You're much. You're so cute. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so this morning we are making something quite local. And... Very, um, hmm. anyways, let's just get right into it. She's going to be teaching us how to make plantain porridge this morning. Yeah, it's um, um, Calabar Delicacy. It's a, okay. It's called Ukang Ukom. Ukang Ukom. Yes. I'm actually a Bibi. Uh-huh. Yes. So I'm so, sure you understand. Yes. Okay. And on your screen right there are the ingredients. So let's re grill through the ingredients okay. while we get this meal ready. Okay, we have our plantain. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I'm just going to go through them quickly. Yeah. We have our salt, pepper. That's our plantain. Yes, we have our scent leaf. Mm -hmm. In Calabar, it's called um, ntong. Ntong. 
Yes. In um, Yoruba, it's called a fury. Okay. And I think people call it nchau. I hope I pronounce it properly. We have a pepper, we have a vegetable oil, uh, our seasoning, seasoning our salt, a fish, a crayfish. Okay. I think that's it. All right. And then, so I see that you, this is quite a different kind of plantain porridge. There's sure, no palm sure. oil going no, no, into no, no, this no, no, recipe. No, 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 palm oil. We can actually cook it without oil, okay. but I'm going to add a little bit of oil. vegetable oil. Okay. Yeah. Um, do, how do we start um, cooking? Um, I'm just going to um, get our pot ready. I'm going okay. to heat it up. So um, you need some water in here, right? Yes, I okay, need to great. wash the plantain. Okay. And, and then... Um, we also have our proteins. Okay. So you can use any protein of your choice, okay. but today I'm going to use um, goat meat. Go! Wow! Yes, I'm going to use wow. goat meat. Wow! Wow! So, so. This is an elitist kind of plantain porridge, yes. actually. Um, but just in case you don't have um, goat meat, I mean there are other things the that other you can use. The yes. other things, you can, can use, use fish. You can, you can use fish. You mm -hmm. can use chicken. Just any protein of your choice. Mm. But I, I prefer it with goat meat. Okay. Some people like to actually mix their unripe plantains with ripe. Plantains. Yeah, but I think it's healthier with the unripe ones. So just stick one. with the unripe ones. Yes. Yeah. And let's not forget that unripe plantains have a lot of health benefits, sure, guys. Sure. And then, uh, ifiri, that's your untong. Oh. This is more or less, this is called scently, right? Scently, yes, yes. Yeah. It's just the best. It's it highly is. medicinal. Very, very. Almost very. all my dishes, this goes into it. Right. Because I know, of right. the health benefits. Exactly. It has a lot of health benefits. Yeah, it does. All right, so let's start cooking. Okay. Um, so we're first, we're going wash, to wash up our unripe plantains. Our plantain. Yeah, if you're just joining us in the kitchen with me this morning, it's Chef Bell. And Can this I? morning, she is making plantain porridge. Mm. I know, right? I love plantains, and let's not even be, let's not even talk about the amazing benefits of all right plants. I know someone right, someone watching right there is like, uh, they're quite expensive at the moment, but hey, health is wealth. So, why not, if not, splurge, right? Okay, so we're, uh, we're just going to wait for our plantains Plantain. to, we're going to chop them up, yes, right? Yeah, we're going to wash them, chop them up, okay. into some large, small, some nice chunks. Okay, So, like how do you like, do you like them big or really in like just really medium. small No, chops? not very small, just medium size. Okay. So let me just wash it Okay. get some water. All right, so while you're washing that and getting that ready, uh -huh. can we explain the process for this meal? Okay, um, after washing this, mm -hmm. you peel it off. Okay. You cut it into some small chunks. Okay. You boil it for about 15 to um, 20 minutes. Okay. While boiling it with your meat stock, of course, mine okay. is the goat meat stock. Okay. You add your cubes, your pepe, your dry fish, mm. your crayfish. You cover it. Allow it to really steam up mm -hmm. for about five minutes. Okay. You stir it properly. Chop up your stand leaf. Add, stir. And, and you're good ready. to go. At what so, point does the vegetable oil go in? Uh, before the scent leaf. Okay. So but this... you can actually do without the vegetable oil. Mm. It depends. Sometimes maybe the, the, the protein has some oil. If the uh, protein that that's has some just oil, enough. If that's enough. You don't mm. need. But some people use palm oil as well. Yeah, I love palm oil. Yeah, but I, I, like prefer, palm oil I prefer no oil or a little bit of vegetable oil. Okay. In this case, I'm using olive oil because it's, it's one it's of the best. Healthy. It's healthier, yes. Yeah, it is it's healthier, healthier yeah. yeah. Oh, great, fantastic. I see that you came prepared this morning. Sure, I'm very well And prepared. I see that you're also like a fitness buff. Oh, I think so. I just love, I love running. Oh. And, and I work in the mornings. Okay. But I didn't do my work today because today I have to, have to be here. Be here. All yes. right. Great stuff. I'm thank actually a health freak. All right. So thank I watch you. what I eat. Obviously. Obviously. And it actually tells in, you know, your recipe this morning. Thank All you. All right. So while we are getting things ready here in the kitchen, we'll head over to the couch with Titi. Uh, Thank you, M.M. Now we have with us Gloria A. Ajogi Adaba. Now, she's a personal development coach, engineer, and environmentalist. She's the founder of Thumbs Up Youth Leadership Development Initiative and a certified John Maxwell coach. A Toastmaster, speaker, leadership trainer. In fact, you know what? Everything we need for the right motivation this morning. What we're talking about today is eating the right soul food. Now, I'm not talking about the food in the kitchen, no. Uh, we're talking about food for the soul. Good morning and welcome to the couch again. Welcome back. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So this, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to approach this particular topic because soul food, uh, it does 
you know, tend to refer to chicken and mm -hmm. dumplings and, you know, very tasty things. But what are you talking about with this okay, topic? Okay, um, I would like to turn the tables a little bit this morning, okay. if you don't mind. And I'll ask you a question. What All can right. I do? I'm a Nigerian. We answer questions with questions. Okay. Um, what, qu what prayer is usually prayed when someone passes on? Can you... Um, you mean by the people that, obviously, that are yes, family or friends? Yes, they're family, friends, okay. just... There's a prayer that oh, when you hear someone has passed has passed on, yeah. you you say you ask prayer. you you ask that God uh, help them rest in peace. Okay, right. But what in particular mm. do we ask for for to rest in peace? Is the soul? Oh yes, of exactly. course. Exactly. Yes. So that's where I'm getting to. It's very very important. Mm. Um, um, why is this important? Seemingly important only at that point. Mm. That's not what it is. It actually is important for our whole lives because our souls are made of our mind, the will, and the emotions. Okay. You know, we were talking earlier, we were saying about how you become subconsciously competent because yeah. things you've done repeatedly yeah. have gone to sit in your mind. Now, it's very important for us to um, realize that the things that we listen to, okay. the things that we see, mm -hmm. things that we do repeatedly mm -hmm. actually are feeding our souls. So, and this month we've been talking about building blocks for a better future. Uh, we talked about knowing, growing, and um, accepting yourself, your individuality. We talked about finding your purpose. We talked about living purposefully all towards the individual. And this is seated in, know, in having a healthy soul food, okay. feeding your mind what is um, good for you. Okay. You know. So in a sense, if you're listening to, you know, maybe... Uh, a lot of negative people mm -hmm. you find your place in yourself in places that you know you're not hearing positive things mm -hmm. you're saying that all those experiences are feeding your soul uh, all as those well. experiences are feeding your soul and you need to be deliberate about feeding your soul that's okay. the emphasis today mm -hmm. um, where do you want to go to in life the things you are doing every day are they really feeding your mind towards getting to your purpose? Are they feeding your mind mm. towards achieving the goal that you've set out to achieve? Okay. Or they're reducing you? Mm. So it, it's something you need to do deliberately, just like um, we had people cooking. Yes. And they, you eat and you grow uh, mm. by, you know, by default. You are growing because you are feeding your body. I actually, are you feeding your soul? I feel like I've heard something similar to this before, mm -hmm. um, you know, from quite a, f quite a few motivational coaches. Okay. They talk about uh, experiencing things that you want. Okay. So, for instance, I heard someone say, you know what, they used to just visit uh, car showrooms okay. and sit in the brand new cars okay. to sort of prepare themselves for when they own a brand new car. Absolutely. But in a place like Nigeria, you'd be like, ah, so I should just go to the showroom. And... <laughs> so is that what you're talking about? Well, that is what I'm talking about, essentially. But it, yes, in mm. a way, because... Mm. That's a deliberate action. Yeah. It's about being deliberate. I think that's what I'll take out from what yes. they're saying. And um, it has to really be what matters to you as a person. Yeah. If that is important to you, fine. Mm. You do it. But what is really important to you, you need to make sure that what is going inside you is, mm. is, is forming you right. Because it's, that's why it's information. It okay. goes in and it forms you. Okay. It forms your mind. It forms your choices. Mm. It forms the decisions you make. So mm. you have to be... You, you, you have a right, like when you go to a restaurant, yes. you see different uh, cuisines and you decide, oh, this is what I want to eat, this is not what I want to eat. Okay. The same for your soul as well, you, because at the end of the day, it's, it's like your central processing unit as a, as a person. So it's going to, it's going to dictate or it dictates what you do. So you need to be there are some there are some people who probably grew up in a very uh, challenging environment Absolutely. Uh, probably didn't have as many positive influences hmm. uh, or maybe forward thinking influences in their Absolutely. environment uh, as they wish they they could have mm -hmm. and they've reached a certain stage now um, and they want to start feeding their soul yes. what is the advice that you would give them oh uh, yes we talked about repetition okay our words of affirmation it depends on the kind of environment and what was what the trauma was okay. um but like you we use positive and negative mm -hmm. right we talked about being around negative people so mm -hmm. you have to deliberately start saying positive things to yourself okay. for example you grew up where uh hearing things like oh yeah you you amount to nothing yeah and, and you, there's nothing good about you, you're mm. stupid, or mm. even some very, very serious traumatic um, experiences. Mm. You really have to start deliberately countering those things. Some people might even need to go for therapy mm. 
and I know it's not something that is really um, embraced here or done because we have, like you said, we have a lot of challenges mm. in the country. So when you talk about some of these things, they don't seem important, but they actually should be. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm here, you mm. know, talking about it. People should be conscious that their minds are very, very important. Your soul is important. Mm. You need to do all you need to do mm. to make sure that you are in the right place. You are coming from a good place whenever you are making decisions and choices. Mm. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the fact that we're exposed to a lot of social media now. Yes. Uh, and news. Absolutely. Um, a lot of the news, in fact, a large <laughs> percentage of news is negative. But it is still considered important information mm. uh, to know about what's happening all around the world. Mm. Uh, but it might be affecting some people in a very deep or a deeper uh, way absolutely. than they might understand. Yes. Can you touch yeah. on that? Yes. Um, like, I listen to news. Mm. Uh, let me use myself as an example. Mm. I listen to news, mm. but I try not to dwell on it. Okay. Like you said, it's good information. You know what's happening. You know what's going on. Mm. And um, as much as you can do something about it, I think this is where people get a little bit carried away. Okay. It becomes so, you become so negative, you keep meditating on it, oh, this is what's happening, and mm. it keeps going on. Fine, probably an analyst and something mm. or something like that. Mm. You can analyze the news, but mm. You have to consciously just drop it where it needs to be dropped. Don't allow right. it to go too far. All right, then. <laughs> I have to say thank you to you for coming to talk to us today. Is there something that you're feeding your soul with that you shouldn't be? Maybe you should ask yourself that question this morning. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and talk to us. And we'll be having her comment on those posts as well. We're going to be taking a quick break, but there's still more on Wake Up Nigeria. Now, there's stuff cooking in the kitchen, and I wanted to find out from M.M. M.M., what protein are we using for our meal this morning? What protein? Is it, uh, is it uh, cow? Is it goat? Is it, uh, what's it? Uh, we are having um, goat meat, Mike. Is it, it's actually goat meat? Yes, it is actually goat meat. Asu? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. it's funny if when you see it that way. Well, this is not as it is not good so meat. meat. <laughs> All right, people, welcome to the kitchen. This is Chef Ibel making her debut on the show today. And we are making plantain porridge, yes. And um, let's talk about the ingredients. Um, I will mention it. We have our goat meat here. Mm -hmm. It's already for boiled. We have our dry fish. We have our scent leaf. Our crayfish, our olive oil, our salt, salt seasoning, and pepper. Mm. I see that you're using yellow pepper. Yes. Yellow pepper has a distinctive taste yes. that it adds to your meal. Yellow. I mean, there's that flavor that it gives to your meal. It is always captivating. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, yes. it just takes the whole, you know, um, it takes up the whole, you know, atmosphere or wherever you are. I mean, it's really, really nice. And then you have your unripe plants in here, which is already cooking. Yes. I see that you put in your stock for your goat's meat in here. Yes. Yes. So now we are just going to leave it to cook till it's really soft. Soft. 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And then when it is ready, right. what are we putting? What are the ingredients? What's going in next? When it's ready, we add our crayfish. Okay. Our cube seasoning. Mm-hmm. Our dry fish. Okay. Our uh, meat. All right. I say that you're very intentional with the kind of ingredients that you use, especially with your fish. What kind of fish is this? Um, that is asa. Asa? Yes. Because, I mean, it, I can tell that once it goes into <laughs> that pot, it's going to, t like, take over the whole... Ooh. You know, you seem meal. to be a good girl. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. Because I trust... you pick up on my ingredients. Yes, I do. I did. My yellow pepper. Your yellow pepper, yeah. Yeah. My kind of fish. Yes. And my scently. Yes. And you don't even need the goat, goat meat. meat. Take because away this goat meat because with oh, this. With that fish, oh, it's a deal. I mean, your meal is complete. That is all this meal needs but when it comes to flavors. You don't even need a lot of seasoning <laughs> cubes because no, 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 this, no. The, the, all that flavor from this fish, the whole one. Yeah. Anyways, I'm just pure. <laughs> like when, when, yes, I am already. When it is, comes to food, I love food. This I mean, is very I'm easy to prepare. You know, it's so easy to prepare and it's 
it's nice. You okay. can you can have it for dinner, you can have it for lunch. You can even have it for breakfast. breakfast. Yes. yes. It's very easy to prepare as well. Um, it's like making your regular, you know, yam, yam porridge. porridge. So, um, yes, right now our plantains are almost ready. Right. We have to go on a break quickly. We have the next 45 minutes to go, people. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, come on, just made me smile behind her now. But hey, come on, it's the next 45 minutes of uh, Monday morning show on Wake Up My Dear. It's mm -hmm. quite an informative experience. I love how Mondays are yeah. motivation, tech, of course. Mm -hmm. This week in history is going to yeah. come much later. You learn quite a bit on Wake Up My Dear, especially on Mondays. You do. Uh, now, every single journey starts with a step. Thank you so much for taking that step, that important step to be with us this morning. Okay, one step that we have taken is ensuring that we give you all that you need. Now there's quite still a lot more to come on the ride. Just stay with us and be with us. It's a great show that we have in store for you. 45 minutes more, we have uh, quite a lot, okay? But remember, so the, yeah, there's a quote. Mm. Uh, one giant step for man. Okay, and one, uh, one uh, leap uh, for mankind. One leap for mankind. That's how you, it is. You'll understand what I'm talking about yeah. on this week one, in history. One, one small step for man, a giant leap <laughs> for mankind. Yeah. A step on the moon and all of that. Mm -hmm. But these days, space travel, but it's going to be quite expensive. Mm. It's like $50 million. Space travel. If you're going no, to I have travel. that. I have that. You do, right? Yeah, I do. I have fifty million dollars. Just you know. Depends on which space account. you want to travel. <laughs> which space? Just have fifty million dollars. Are you representing me? <laughs> it's passion. What would you do if that fifty it's million dollars? Passion. Would you sit down and watch me? <laughs> <laughs> you just said, "Hey, call that guy." <laughs> so like, come, come. <laughs> you're mad. <laughs> But um, hey, but you know it's, it's so interesting you should say that because many billionaires don't even have time to watch TV. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're busy owning the station. If I hear you know? all those uh, Saudi billionaires, they you like TV. Eh? You think they they have time to be? They be just playing with lion. You know, those guys to play with lion <laughs> and tiger. <laughs> We have some money, can we do some things? But hey, come on, mm. if you want to interact with us. Talk to us on social mm. media about what you would do if you had uh, $10 million. Mm. Yeah, what would you be doing with it? Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria <laughs> on TVC for Facebook and, of course, uh, Instagram. You know what? Hmm? Uh, you know, man, you can be the way I'll enter into that PCR right now. <laughs> All of them just sitting down there. You guys are telling me you did your head. What is it? Oh, what my goodness. But hey, come on. You can watch this live absolutely anywhere across the world. Use our mobile app, download it from the Google Play Store mm -hmm. and Apple iOS. Mm -hmm. And what do we have left on the show? Quite a bit. But um, yeah, but before we go to the yeah. show, the, the, that, that, uh, the, the goat meat that's just going on there. Uh, What's happening there? <laughs> that goat meat that you've been trying to encourage my, them to fry. Talking about owning $10 million, you can buy mm -hmm. all the goats. <laughs> That you want. Imagine. Yeah, but I and then you can eat all the plantain porridge. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Ibele that. Different, uh, re different recipes, I different to, tastes. I was talking to Ibele that. That, that got me to view. There's a lot of recipes for plantain, for plantain porridge. porridge. This yeah. is just mm. one of it. Yeah, I know. Yes. Mm, so okay. the most simplest to make. Okay. Very, very easy mm. to make. My niece is actually inventive dishes. Anyway, let's hurry up and, you know, well, um, right. and, and uh, um, put the goat's meat into the Shea, plantain so okay, that uh, okay. Mike doesn't have right. access to I've it. told them that they're going to have to cut some and fry. But let's uh, Golden Company in Nigeria that deals with styling of hair, treatment and sales of hair products. Of course, uh, we'll be talking to them about their business model. Uh, this was founded by Ido Kazim Olakunle. Uh, we'll be talking to them about their business model and what we can learn from how they've conducted business so far in Nigeria. $10 million. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I, we're talking about, we don't, we don't have time, time. $10 million, $10 million, mm -hmm. $10 million. What did you do? Do you need $10 million, Mike? I can always lend it to you. you know, if you I would dash you. you. I do don't need payment to lend. Plan. No, a proper <laughs> business person does not just dash out $10 million. They, <laughs> they create a payment plan so you can pay them back. And I, they can get so interest. they should tell me that, they should tell me that home guys are fed the brain. It's not seen yet. <laughs> <laughs> These two need to eat that chef food. No. You know, the, the $10 million. I'm correct. I'm right right in hunger pants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to correct you. I'm not hungry. $10 million. Dollars. I'm eager. $10 million. Dollars. You have $10 million. You're uh, sitting here with me. I have $10 million. It's like only having $10 million at your big brother's house. Yeah. <laughs> no, this one is the money. You're sitting wow. here with me. But you have $10 million. Two of you. Uh, in fact, for that people say, but none of you are going to eat that goat's meat today. <laughs> we have to take the news at this point, but after a few facts that you might find interesting. It's about time for another news update right here on Wake Up Nigeria. We begin with the leadership of the striking National Association of Resident Doctors who have refused to sign the new memorandum of action 
brokered by its parent body, the Nigerian Medical Association, the NMA, the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria, the medical doctors in the academic, appended their signatures to the new MOU, but only NARD declined assent. The NMA's intervention was to end the resumed strike of the resident doctors, which enters its 22nd day yesterday. Uh, NARD President Ulawa uh, Okuhuye Sui, who declined his assent owing to an undisclosed undisclosed clause insisted the leadership has to get the nod of members before he could sign the document. The Minister of Labor and Employment said the end of the six hour long meeting that had all other unions in the negotiation including the NMA and the Medical and Dental Consultants of Nigeria signed the new agreement. Mr. Chris Ngige disclosed that the meeting did not discuss the issue of no work no pay but that all parties at the meeting agreed to an out-of-court settlement. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have arrested a wanted drug dealer at a church in Ujidu Ikeda in Lagos State. Mr. Stephen Ike Nyao has been on the wanted list for attempting to export 69.65 kilograms of cocaine, heroin and cannabis to the United Kingdom through Muritala Mohammed International Airport. The NDLEA operatives had traced the wanted drug dealer to a popular Pentecostal church where they arrested him soon after he stepped out of church service. Also, at the Lagos airport, NDLEA operatives arrested an Italy-bound passenger, Abibu Miminu, during the outward clearance of passengers on Ethiopian Airways flight, Airways flight to Italy. While under observation, the agency's facility, the trafficker excreted 68 wraps of heroin in three excretions, all weighing 800 grams. Songs of thanksgiving and praise to God were on the lips of the mother of the secretary to the Bayosa state government, Bettina Benson, after she regained, regained her freedom yesterday. The 86-year-old spent one month in captivity and has been reunited with her family in Yenogwa the Bayelsa state capital. The state's commissioner for police said the command worked in synergy with the security agencies to enable the unconditional release of the octogenarian from her abductors. He added that some arrests have been made in connection with the kidnap. The command is happy to announce that uh, Madame Bettina Benson, who was kidnapped three weeks ago, had just been released and it was through the collaborative effort of all the security agencies in the state. We worked together in synergy and uh, were able to pick some of the people who were behind the kidnapping. I think it's the pressure that had led to her being released today. Our message to everybody who is involved in this heinous act is that it is a crime and it will be viewed as a crime. That no matter how far you go, the law will catch up with you and you'll be dealt accordingly. And I want to also to emphasize that no money was paid for this particular rescue. And that's all we have on the news for now on Wake Up Nigeria. We have Mike standing by with sports. No, thank you for staying with us. It's our SME segment this Monday morning, and we have High Detoxin Hair Consult, a registered hair consulting company in Nigeria that deals with styling, hair treatment, sales of hair products, and of course, uh, they've been in the business, and we are here with Tosin. It's great to have you. You're welcome this morning. Okay, so hair consult. We're talking about that this morning. I know uh, consultants, everyone think about consultants, they think of maybe medical services, they think of, you know, uh, you know, some other kind of thing. But hair consultancy, what does that entail? What exactly do you do? Okay, so basically, apart from styling hair um, professionally, I also consult here for brands, and um, presently I'm working with Lush and Nigeria. Mm. So what I do is um, I test products before they go into the market, and then we talk about the kind of products to produce that is acceptable in the market, mm. and of course discuss the competition in the market. So mm. basically, um, just to make sure that um, the consumers they get good product from all these hair brands. Wonderful. So for those that sell human hair and all that, I also check for the value and the quality of the hair they are buying from other. Um, countries really mm. so if you buy fake hair you can send it to me I'll, I'll verify you verified, what you yeah? invested money on is real, or real. so yeah. you're, you're more or less like a middleman 
you know, the man who makes it available, who ensures that, uh, you know, the, 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 the company, they, they give what the people want, yeah. basically. Uh, yeah. How important is that role? That role of a middleman, that role of a hair, hair consultant in any sort of business, how important is it? Okay, so um, because of course we have a lot of competition in the market right now, mm. and you need to be able that you need to be able to know that you are um, up to the tax in the market. Mm. So most times, what we do is ensure that we have the same product or different products that um, is acceptable in the market and gives you edge in the competition in the industry, basically. So you know, I've heard that there's this very popular saying people throw about that uh, you are your own competition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is, you see, I, I always say that, look, when you, you, you hear that, you don't hear that from people who are at the top, you know, because you are not your own competition. You mentioned competition. How do you, how do you, how do you deal with competition as a business? Okay, so, um, first of all, you want to look at what the other person is doing. Mm. So, so, so you have to study them, yes, yeah? Yes, you have to study them to mm. know what they are doing, so as to know what you would do to have an edge over your competitor. So if the saying, the saying that's, that, that goes that you are own, your, your own competition mm. can only be for your personal life, basically. Mm. But in mm. the business mm. world, you have to know what your, your competitor is doing mm. so as to move faster than them. Mm. Now, you made mention of quality. You know, that's something and ensuring a, a quality control, some sort of, you know, which you do in your business. How, how important is that, ensuring that uh, people, what they get is the right quality? Because, you know, a number of times we are in a business environment as Nigerians where people don't really care. They just care about the particular sale or, 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 or the spore of the moment. But then when you give quality and then you can have a second, a second recommendation and all of that, how important is it for a business owner to ensure that what you give to your clients or to people who patronize your business is of utmost quality? Okay, so most times really the problem is usually money. Mm. And... Um, once your product is good and is expensive, you get less buyer, really. So mm. that's why I, I advise people, air vendors, really, to have a target market. So have the kind of people you want to attend to so that so as to know um, how to put your prices. Because if it is too expensive... Mm. <laughs> you mentioned target market. Let's talk about targeting. When you, how, do you, how, do you, how do you ensure or how do you target a particular market? Okay, so... Um, let's assume that you sell human hair. Mm. Um, an average Nigerian student won't be able to afford the quality of human hair because mm. it ranges from the price of 200000 to 300000 uh, It's not the Nigerian students these days. Eh? And They're it, not playing. No. And hair is usually affected by dollar. So okay. if you want to sell to students, really, mm. and you are selling hair of $1 million, well, like you said, mm. <laughs> I'm just trying to generalize. Do you have hair of $1 million? Oh, yes. Are you kidding me? We have live donor people that would, that would sell their hair. And I, then we we'll put I, I, it in But when they say human hair, I told that all of it was humans that cut their hair so off. We, so because it's, we have different types of hair. We have synthetic, we have fiber, we have human hair mm. that people think is human hair, but it's not totally human hair. So that's why, the, that's why I'm here. Then there's human, human hair. Yes. Because I, 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 I saw this particular documentary, I think it was an Asian country, where uh, they groom hair and they groom their hair to a and then they go and, and shave it, it yes. off and, all of that, and then they treat it and all of that and do and all of that. Sell. That's what I thought anything. When you say human hair, that's what came to mind. Okay, so that's why you need a hair consultant to mm. you know. And that's why most times when some of my clients, they buy their hair, they want me to check to be sure that they've spent the money on a quality hair. On quality hair. All right. Now, if you... Now, moving, moving on from that now, uh, you've, you've, you've mentioned your business model, your target market, how to put out stock to your, to your target market and all of that. How is um, profit... Let's talk about profitability and all of that, the business of human hair and all of that. Profitability. Is it something that uh, is viable financially? Okay, so... When you ask that question, I'm smiling because if you are into any business that involves women, you are going to say. Okay, now we'll pick up <laughs> on profitability. I like that angle he came from, but let's just take a short break and check out some facts. We'll get back to the discussion. All right, now just before we went on that break with Tosin, we're talking about uh, target market and profitability when it comes to hair. Profitability. Now you made mention of you made a statement. Let's pick back on that statement again. So I I said that anything that involves women mm. usually sells. So that's the thing. So even tailors, they tell you that if you look, if you're going to do something, men don't buy. And even when they buy, they are buying for women. <laughs> is that is that is, 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 is that's obtainable with hair also, right? Okay. So um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but women like to buy things a lot. Mm, yeah, men have. 
the they have too many responsibilities so mm. you can launder your your one jacket for two years mm -hmm. a lady will wear one jacket two times and say everybody the whole world knows me with this jacket this and jacket, she wants to buy yeah. something else so that's the same thing that happens with them when they are buying hair Hmm. So they are usually trying to change and buy constantly to change their looks, of course. Hmm. When a woman has a good air horn, they hmm. are. So the business is quite profitable, really. Okay, now, moving forward, let's talk about your challenges. Because, look, it is something that's constant in every business. What, what are the peculiar challenges that you have encountered in uh, hair consultancy business? Okay, so number one is people don't um, think they have the need to get somebody to check their hair. Okay. Whatever they get from the vendors, they are okay with it. Mm. And of course, they trust the vendors more. And also, people don't use um, air consultants like really. Um, we you have don't, to try to convince yes. them why you need, why you are a very we, important part we of the, don't the business only, chain. I don't only consult for testing products. I also help you pick your hairstyle for your wedding or your event. Mm. So, mm. so as to determine the kind of hairstyles that will work with you. That suits, that suits you, know? you whatever the, you, you, you want to do. Yes, but people would rather go online and download pictures and then send to their stylist and then they are not looking as good as they thought they were going to look. Mm. So that's why we are here to fill in the gap. To fill in the gap. So how have you been able to do that? When you're talking about sensitizing, you know, uh, do, you, do, you, do you have seminars or places where you talk to people or it's all social media? How do you get your message out to the general public? Okay, so um, thankfully I'm working with Lush and Nigeria right now. Okay. And of course they have a bigger platform. Okay. And we have a school, the Lush Academy, okay. where we train people and tell them about hair and other things. So that's the avenue I've been using right now too. So uh, what does that, what, what, what are the, the academy, what does it entail? What do they do in the academy? How long is it? How long is the, the course in the academy? And all okay, that? so number one, the academy is free. Oh, it yes, is. It is free. And mm. then of course the certificate they give you, you can use it anywhere in the world to practice. Ooh, and wow. of course, um, we have different courses. So we tell you how to check the products, we okay. teach you styles and how to install some other hair and um, how to work with synthetic hair and human hair, how to style brighter hair and all that. And the courses are just for four weeks. Four and when weeks. you're done, you can go for another class because we have different topics that we teach there. So anyone that you want to learn, you can always come. I like, I like that you said the courses are free. Why, why did you guys, why is, why is it free? Because people feel that if, if, if there's something, if there's value, maybe there, there, there should be some sort of uh, you know, finances attached if, if there's value. Okay, so um, you're right, actually. Mm. But we also give value. And mm. um, we graduated some students a um, few weeks ago. And a number of students came in for the induction when we started, but only 15 students graduated. We had about 65 students start. So I oh, know. So let me say you enter, I mean, say you come out. <laughs> you, you, not everybody that comes in graduates. So, that the, thing, you have to. so the thing is, um, I don't know if it is the same all over the world, but in Nigeria, people don't tend to take anything that is free serious. Mm, you have, you, there, there you are, you got it right. So they feel like, oh, if I don't pay for it, then I can. So that's why we have 15 students, but I'm telling you what you get from that school is mm. amazing. But I like that, I like that they know that, look, it's not, not everybody that comes in will go out of a class and all of that. Wonderful job you guys are doing there. And uh, okay. the, yes, wishing you uh, all the best. Thank you in, so uh, much. In such a, an you. environment, okay? Thank you. Okay, all right, so that's it, that's it. Heidi does in hair consultancy. I hope that that's something that uh, people can jump in more and then people can get to understand that, look, they need you, you're a very important part of the business chain. So that you don't carry fake hairs and all of that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. That's it. I hope you're able to pick up one or two things, of course, from uh, that particular discussion. It was hair consulting. And apart from that, the middlemen, the middlemen play a very, very important role in how things go about in business. The challenges, of course, that come are, from what Tosin mentioned, the challenges, of course, that come are having to talk to people, sensitizing them or, you know, making them understand that, look, they are a very important part of a business. That is a challenge that, of course, you can learn from in whatever kind of business that you want to do, understanding, getting your target market, and then letting them know that they actually need you as a part of the business chain in whatever you are doing. All right, that's all on SME on Monday. And uh, let's head over now. Uh, the ladies, uh, I, I hope you guys fried that uh, chicken because Tosin is going to be here. And Tosin, okay, not chicken. To Mike, whenever he says we should fry food. All right, Tosin. Um, the lady here, they'll prepare something. Hi, they, they have something here for you, okay? Thank you. Please. Just move that way. Welcome to the kitchen, right. Tosi. Welcome. Please have a seat. Join us. And Welcome. Of course, um, we have um, 
Scroll. Uh, sorry, soul scroll. Soul scrolls. Soul scrolls. Sorry, I kept on saying scroll, but soul uh, scrolls soul with scrolls. us here. Welcome, <laughs> and uh, this is Chef Ibel, and this morning she's Thank made you. for you oh, yes. both oh. plantain so porridge. Mm -hmm. Yes, have you had plantain porridge before? All right. Well, no, I haven't. So but okay, <laughs> so please um, quickly tell us how you put this together, Ibel, and um, you'll have a taste. Of course, mm. this is plantain mm -hmm. porridge made with unripe plantain. Yep. Mm. We have our goat meat. Mm. Our crayfish, our pepper, yeah. our cubes, um, crayfish, yeah. mm -hmm. and our scent leaves to spice it up. Fantastic. All right, great. So, um, oh, Titi, <laughs> yeah. help us out here. Right. Um, this is for you, so That's squirrels you. and so have a taste. Please have a taste and, and let us, us know what you think. Okay. What she's so playing. You, so you guys don't get to taste us? <laughs> no, you go ahead. Okay. This is for you, specially made for you. Like it, love it. Mm. Gonna take think? it home? Yes, that's really nice. All right. Tosin, what do you think? This is amazing. Oh, oh, oh you have arranged yourself. <laughs> wow. You brought the plate closer. Right. <laughs> that's a good sign. Nice. Well mm. done, okay. Chef Ibel. Well, well done. Thank you. Thank you. So and I have much. to say, it smells amazing. Yes, Thank it, you. Yeah, it does. So, some Monday words of wisdom from Mike are required at this point. Okay, so I'm what going, do you have for us? I'm going to be serious today. Some motivation for you. Wow. When your back is against the wall, when all hope seems lost, when it seems like the world is against you and it feels like you need to give up, really nice. Benny, sometimes it's okay to give up. <laughs> really? Really, Mike? You know, I thought you were going to say something meaningful. <laughs> For once, it was but Mike. It's all right. What it's do you all right. expect? It's all right. It's but all we're right. going to be back again tomorrow morning from 7 a.m. as always. Yes, thank you to all our guests. You yeah. all have been amazing. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. For thank you. Thank you. All right, you and guys keep tomorrow. eating. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.